I've got to run. This is Will Sanchez. My very special guest today is Beth Weinstein. She's a runner. She is more than a runner. She is the founder of the running company called Only Adams. I'm thrilled to have Beth as a guest. Thanks. Beth, before we go into your career as the founder of this running company, I mean, this gear company, introduce yourself to our audience in terms of where you were born and tell us a little bit about your childhood. I'm born and raised in California, but I've lived in New York a really long time now. Childhood, growing up, I was always very active. I grew up, um, you know, it was always nice weather year-round. And I think what started me off in my active career was my mom wanted me to play piano, my brother and I both. And I hated it a lot. And I begged and begged and begged to quit. And finally, I was allowed to quit. And the first thing I asked to do after piano was to play sports. So I went into soccer and then softball. Well, how, what age was this? Oh, maybe around maybe seven, eight, maybe so even earlier. So you played piano from four to from seven? From like four, yeah. I loved sports. You know, it was fun. I, softball, I was on a really great team. We ended up going to championships, traveling across California. Oh, well, this is in high school, I guess? Before then, it was like fifth grade up until high school. Oh, we, wow. Our team was usually pretty good. Wow, um, what was your favorite <laughs> position? My favorite was probably, I liked second base. Um, I also played catcher. Someone made me pitch for a while, but I was a little stressed out by pitching. <laughs> I wasn't that good. Um, is it underhand pitching? Yeah, it was fast, fast pitch, very fast pitch. Helmets, yeah, I've been hit with a few softballs, had a concussion, rushed okay. to the doctor, everything. Okay. <laughs> well, this is great. So yeah. you probably watched the professionals on baseball and emulated them. Do you ever participate in a triple play, anything exciting like that? Not that exciting. I mean, the most exciting is when you're, you know, in seventh grade with all your, it was a girls team, all girls, and then we're taking these like hours, you know, hour long rides to some other part of California we'd never been to uh -huh. and spending the night in a hotel as a team. I mean, okay. that's, and then eating pizza and ice cream afterwards, it's, it's fun. Oh, so all the camaraderie. Thing. Yeah, it was camaraderie and then we were also actually really good. So of course winning is fun too. <laughs> yeah, really. Eventually you went into college, it sounds like. What yeah, I, like I played field hockey, soccer, and softball throughout high school and then um, got to college and typically what happened, happens to a lot of us, you go to college, and you're, I didn't play in any college teams, and then I started craving, physically craving more activity. So I actually took up dancing, but just, you know, recreational dancing for fun, and um, got into yoga, and then actually really started missing things like soccer and, and actually just moving. The college I went to was mandatory PE classes, so I took um, weightlifting. And at that point, I actually started like a workout routine uh -huh. um, by my junior or senior year, like actually going to the gym before school in the morning, which is a little strange in college because most people are just getting wasted and hungover, which uh -huh. I was also doing too. Oh, okay. After college, I moved straight to New York, um, joined a gym, but I remember getting pretty bored at the gym very quickly. I took up running on a treadmill, just very small amounts. I kind of ran outside. I mean, growing up playing soccer, yeah, I, yeah. I knew I could run, and um, I didn't mind running in, in, during sports. But I never actually thought about taking up running. And actually, in grade school, in uh, what was it, junior high, I hated running because they forced us to run. They forced uh -huh. us to run a mile. And, uh -huh. Oh, this is what you call PE, physical yeah, education? Yeah, PE class. And my friend and I used to actually hide behind the bleachers and like pretend to run a loop and we'd actually be running like a half mile. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So it was terrible. I worked at this company and a handful of my coworkers were running a, a 5K, one of them, breast cancer 5Ks. It was a run walk. And I remember as a team, we started to walk and everyone else was running. So I actually just started running. At the end, I was like, wow, that was really fun. I'm going to take up outdoor running. So I joined uh, the Roadrunners classes, which I think they still do today, the 10-week programs. The Tuesdays and Thursdays yeah, with the Yeah, Tuesday nights with Bob and Shelly. I did for uh, seven years or something, oh, a, a really? long time, yeah. I met, um, I met one of my dear friends, who's still a really great friend today, Georgia. She was my original running partner. We yeah. met in the very first class I took. We ended up being the same pace, and she, she was really ambitious and was training for all these things. So we started running together, and next thing you know, she's like, why don't you do a 10K? Why don't you do a 15K? And so I kept just adding these things, and she's like, well, I'm doing a half marathon. And then, but I'll never forget, so my first 15K ever was that, I think it used to be called the hot chocolate. 
I think it's now called something else, the one in Central Park it's in the winter. It's called hot chocolate. Yeah, is it, it might, might December usually? Yeah, I remember finishing that. It was at nine miles and dying. Like the first thing I said was, why would anyone run a marathon? Like this is crazy. But of course, you know, it's, I have that personality that mm -hmm. like, wow, that was hard, but I love challenges and I actually feel really good now. Let me try this again. This is uh, after you had the hot chocolate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You had to walk a while to go to that school. I don't know chocolate. if I ever got the hot chocolate. I know, I remember that. <laughs> I think they, I bailed they on that. you earn that chocolate. <laughs> Yeah, so Georgia just kept talking me into all these distance races, and my first half was the Brooklyn half back when it started in Coney Island in a different month. I want to say it was March or April because it was cold. Mm -hmm. The first year I did it was actually very cold. And again, it was one of those like, why would anyone do this? That was hard. <laughs> but <laughs> So it sounds like eventually you went to a marathon. Yeah, I have, I have that personality. You know, I tend to be kind of type A. I love challenges. I've always been um, a risk taker. Like, I've usually don't say no to a lot of things. And um, I actually really enjoy fear in some way. So it's like a marathon sounded terrible. And, but, you know, she had this great idea. Let's go to San Francisco and do this marathon, as, you know, together. And I have family in San Francisco. So we signed up to do it. And I was in the middle of training. And then um, a long story, but suddenly my dad got sick. And um, it was all very quick and very unexpected. Mm -hmm. And it was right in the middle of marathon training, and it was that, that during the summer. And my dad actually lived out in um, the Palm Palm Springs area in the mm -hmm. desert. And he ended up getting so sick that I had to fly out there. And it was July, and it's if anyone's been there, it's <laughs> it's Ooh. like a hundred degrees at seven in the morning, yeah. and it's like boiling hot. And there's just there's not really like trees to you know there's really no covering. And I remember um, you know knowing my dad was in the hospital and not knowing what was going to happen. And then I also was, like, freelancing at some company, like, de you know, debating on where to go with my career. So I was in this kind of turmoil point in my life, and I was training for this marathon. But I kept, I remember, you know, like, I spent weeks out there um, during the end of my dad's life, and I just stuck to the training plan because I knew, like, you know, at that point I needed something. He ended up passing away, like, two months or it was a month and a half before my first marathon. It was very quick. Yeah, it was quick, you know, and in a way it was a blessing, but it was just like all this stuff going on. But, you know, it's, and this is kind of, it was a major turning point in like my running career. That was, it was 11 years ago. It was a while ago. Okay. But, you know, when I crossed the finish line at that marathon, yeah. you know, it was hard. It was in San Francisco. And, you know, typically, even to this day, I, I still cry a lot at the end of marathons. I think a lot of people do. Uh -huh. I don't know, pain, joy, whatever it is. A combination, um, yeah. Yeah, and that one I was, like, bawling. Like, oh, my God, you know, like, my dad would have been proud, or I don't know, maybe he would have thought I was crazy, but it was, like... But the other family were there. You know, yeah, mom, yeah, my brother was actually there, and um, it was this realization that had I maybe, you know, who knows what would have happened, but if I didn't have running in my life, and I didn't have these friends, and I didn't have an outlet for, you know, the stress of life... It was the first time where I actually paid attention to, like, why I was running. Uh -huh. Like, I just thought it was like, oh, stay in shape and a new challenge, something, mm -hmm. you know, one of those checklists in your life. But it really turned into something different from that point forward. Okay. Yeah. It became a, like, a metaphor for life for yourself? Yeah. Right after that, I also just got more into running. You know, New York City is the best place on earth for running. Um, we have so many groups. I made all these friends. I, I'm very extroverted and social, so... You know, I liked the idea of being able to go for a run instead of just go drinking. Because mm -hmm. especially when you're younger in the city, that's all you end up doing mm -hmm. is like it's the social activities involve like going to a bar or going out. And um, running was like a healthier social outlet, which I really liked. And mm -hmm. it was I've always liked being around different kinds of people. So I liked that you got to meet different types. And it wasn't just obsessive runners. It was like obsessive runners who are also into the same music as me or whatever it is, uh -huh, you know, uh -huh. so uh, just making a lot of different friends, tried out a bunch of groups, you know, I'm friends with people in the Flyers, I'm friends with, you know, Whippet, South Brooklyn, North Brooklyn, um, I've done like the Nike runs, I've done uh, whatever they are now, Jackrabbit, running company used to have runs, so it was kind of like whatever was mm. around, whatever uh -huh, sounded uh -huh. fun. Well, that's right. There's a club for every day. Of yeah. Week. Oh, now there's a club on every street. I, I make jokes about that. Because um, <laughs> supposedly there's, I, I've even heard of a coffee shop in the West Village that has their own running club. I don't know what it is, but I've heard a rumor about that. Yeah, there's a, there's a club <laughs> called the Most Informal 
Vunk Club. Oh, yeah. Ever. Yes. That might I know be them, the, that too. That might be the coffee club. Yes. <laughs> the, the, the beer and drinking and then running club. No. Oh, that's right. <laughs> and there's the pizza run. The, oh, yes. The, the, the donut run. run. Yes. But what was your career like at this point? Now you're, you, you discover you're running, you're, you're running family, you're running buddies all over the city. <laughs> But you eventually you started this this company that we want to talk about. Yeah. So what was what was your career like? I actually it's I, I kind of fell into the fashion industry. I ended up doing product development. That's how I spent most of my career, which I actually really love. But I was never I actually never studied fashion. I um, went to a liberal arts university. And I loved what I did. Um, product development was a really interesting way of mixing creative and business and helping get products made. So I worked for a lot of the big brands like Gap, Unlimited Brands, Macy's, and worked for a, a well-known designer named Rebecca Taylor. When I first started thinking about doing my own running brand was almost 10 years ago. Uh -huh. There weren't a lot of great clothes out there. I mean, today it's different because there's a lot more options, but running wasn't as big as it was. Um, the brands were really just making the same stuff. And I, I really couldn't find one pair of running shorts that fit me properly that also looked good. Because mm -hmm. let's admit it, I'm in New York. You know, the New Yorkers, we all like to look kind of good. I never thought it made sense to, like, look crappy just because you're wearing running clothes. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, why isn't someone, I just kept saying this, why isn't someone making a nice pair of running shorts that, like, look cute, but then I can also run a marathon in them. Mm -hmm. Like, I want to be able to fit gels and you know a credit card and maybe even a cell phone my keys and the one pair of shorts that i used to wear a lot of um, only had one little pocket and it actually was not big enough to fit a new york city metro card i guess you weren't into that belt thing that yeah they, they, yeah the actually this company so it was it was a nike short and nike had called me to interview with them actually lou lemon had at one point too um, the Nike position, though, I, I told them I was only interested in working on their running clothes. <laughs> they wanted me to work on, like, the NFL line, and I actually don't like American football. You know, for years I kept thinking about this, just kind of as, like, an, a thought, like, because that's what I did for a living. Like, yeah. why? You know, I knew how much money it costs to make a pocket big enough for a Metro card. I knew how much money it would cost to add a, an extra pocket or a zipper on a pocket. I mean... There's pretty much a standard when you work with um, mass production in Asia, mm -hmm. and that was what I did for a living. So it actually started really bothering me. Like, no one's taking us into consideration. No one's really thinking about what a runner needs and also, like, an, kind of an urban runner, mm -hmm. um, someone who might be in their 20s and 30s who kind of cares about how they look. Not super vain, but also... You know, in New York City, it's a little different. Like, we would go for a run and then maybe go out to brunch afterwards or go for drinks after a Thursday night track workout, right, right. you know. And I don't know if people do that as much in the suburbs where they drive to go run. Mm -hmm. But here in the city, it's like you're on the subway sometimes for 45 minutes after a run. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of trying to think about how, does, how do you create running clothes that are super functional, that actually fit right, but also look good and... Um, you know, and then I got into how do you have a sustainable business model and support mm -hmm. something like a local economy, um, you know, better. Not to say, like, overseas production is not good, mm -hmm. but, you know, I've been there. I've been in large Asian factories, and it's, you know, mass, pr mass production like that is really not the best thing for our planet. It's not a sustainable way of producing mm -hmm. consumer product. So your model is a little different. How do you sustain? How do you help the environment? I do use better quality fabrics. The details that go into the the stitching even, um, the zipper alone. I mean, I, I'm friends with someone who owns a yoga brand, and they're, they're like, oh, my God, we don't even use zippers because zippers are so expensive. The zipper alone costs a few dollars. It's mm -hmm. very expensive because mm -hmm. it's one of the best quality zippers on the planet. It's a reflective zipper, which I chose on purpose so that we could have That's reflective right. protection. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, for me as a runner, like, I was never comfortable putting a credit card in one of those fold-over pockets because yeah. they can easily fall out. Okay. And I always, you know, I wanted either, like, a zipper or, like, a really good piece of Velcro. Okay. I've been thinking about it. It's been on my mind for about 9, 10, and okay. then I started getting a little more serious, like, three okay, or four so years ago. Okay, so what happened that pushed you over? Okay, now I'm um, doing it. <laughs> was it one event or was it just a series? It was a mixture of things. So after my dad had passed away, it kind of made me, made me rethink life in general like what am I doing you know how long are we here for what's the point like 
Wow, deep you know, thoughts. Yeah, well, of course. I, I tend to go very deep. Um, I'm very, like, a spiritual person in general. You know, I liked what I did for a living. I didn't really love the industry I was in. A lot of people know this. It's a lot of craziness. It's, you know, fashion I've never really cared that much about well, in particular. a lot of interesting people in there. You yeah. definitely meet yeah, uh, yeah. characters. Um, so Sounds I, like uh, you know, meeting you as a character, too. Yeah, I'm definitely a character. <laughs> So I had um, actually left fashion and gone to work for some consumer product tech startups, kind of these like small early stage companies, and I helped a few friends launch other companies. And I actually had worked on um, a separate company with someone else of our own and ended up scrapping it. It was a different kind of clothing. And after all that, it just really got me thinking like, oh, here I am helping all these people launch their own companies and get products made. And um, I kept, I, it was actually like eating me alive. like. I want to just do this. I actually was doing it, kind of started doing it as like a side project. Like, oh, let me just see what happens. You know, I was doing it while working for a while, and then things kind of fell into place. Like something I was working on ended right at the beginning of marathon season, and then I started getting some press, and then started getting more traction, and then it just kind of like, it was like a now or never. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, give this a try, see what happens. You know, the the, the supporters we've had, like a lot of, you know, the customers, the fans are fans, like, and I know this, like, as soon as someone tries those shorts, like, they love them, and I am so confident. If I could afford to give them away to every runner in the United States, I would, because I, I know, because I am, you know, it's like, I'm not just saying that because it's a product that I make, uh -huh. but I am, I'm an actual runner. I run marathons and ultras, and I run consistently in my products. So if it doesn't work for me, it's not going to work for anyone else. Okay. You run for a lot of clubs, but I think one of the early ones to try out your clothing was the North Brook and Runners. Yes, and they're a great group. Last year they approached me about making some team singlets. Actually, the one I'm wearing now is what we used because it just happens to be the same colors as theirs. Yeah. They do the, the cool logo with uh -huh. the MBR. And they're looking very cool. Yeah. So, they tend to be a lot of really fun people in MBR, and they're very social, which I like. You said you run lots of things. I I saw in one that you did the uh, the Burning Man. I have run the Burning Man Ultra a few times. It's a great race. Well, what attracted um, you to that? Because it's uh, <laughs> it's a little bit out there. It's funny. I had been, um, you know, growing up in California, and I, I used to be a raver and party a lot. And, of course, I had heard about Burning Man for many, many years and been invited to go, and I actually turned it down on, like, Oh, no, not my thing, not my thing. And then, you know, when I started getting more into, like, marathons and, and then I met Sherry and I heard about it, I was like, ooh, that, that sounds like a reason to go and um, run the ultra. But then I was like, well, I don't want to go unless I know I can run an ultra. So I ran a, a different ultra first, a 50K, the, the Bear Mountain Ultra. Your test Yeah, ultra. just to make sure I could handle the extra mileage. You don't want to go to Nevada, you know, just for... Although, <laughs> Although yes. you know, this, it's a wild scene. I, uh... It's amazing. It was life-changing. I love Burning Man. I've gone three times. I will go more. I'm skipping this year, unfortunately. But, um, yeah, it's amazing. And, honestly, there's no race like that anywhere. I mean, the whole reason I run is for fun. The Burning Man Ultra is just, it's a blast. It's like a party. I, no, I, had, I, I had Sherry here, sitting yeah. here, and uh, she showed me photos and videos, and it's like no 50K I ever seen. It's in yeah. the desert, you know, and, and, I, and I love it that clothes are optional. So probably oh, yes. not, you have to think, what clothes I don't are run optional? naked, though. I do not run naked. No, actually, I ran in um, Only Adams two years, yeah. And yeah. then, you know, I, I, you add a little costume element for fun. Oh, that's right. That's you know? right. You know, I remember when I was running regularly, uh, the running skirts, I think in 2010, everybody wanted them. Was one, is running skirts part of your your repertoire? We, we had some skirts. Um, we're kind of phasing them out. We're really putting all of our energy into focusing on the shorts. Um, shorts, and then we do tops as well. But the whole idea is to perfect a running short, which, you know, we've spent, it's been like years of like reworking little tweaks and making sure it's now, perfect. Do, do you need beta testers who guy says, I, I'll, I'll test your shorts. Always beta testing. I mean, the way, so having worked for tech startups and the way a lot of tech startups work is a very agile environment, and that's pretty much how I've treated this company. It's like, yeah, I could produce 10,000 pieces of something, and if it's not great, then you're going to have 10,000 unhappy customers. But instead, we're doing smaller quantities and making sure they work really well and actually asking customers for feedback. So... It's constantly iterating on, like, what could we do better? How can we improve your experience? I mean, 
the whole point is, is, you know, if you're passionate about running and you love running, like how to make it a better experience. It's, it's bringing more joy to the experience of running. It's not, I don't, I don't see it as just clothes. It's about the whole experience. Like you want to run a marathon or a half marathon without tugging at your shorts. You want to run a half marathon and carry enough gels so you don't have to worry about it. You want to be able to pose for photos and look good and post them on Instagram afterwards. I mean, it's, you know, I really see running, it's, it's not just running, it's like, it, it goes deep, it's mm -hmm. like your life, you have to be comfortable, you mm -hmm. have to feel mm -hmm. good, you have to mm -hmm. look good, you know. Interesting. I, yeah. I think this part of it's an educational thing, because I, most guys don't really care, they just put something on and go, most guys. There are exceptions, but I would imagine... <laughs> not these days, yeah, there's a lot days, of men that care how they look. How the old joke is, you know, do these shorts make my butt look small? You know, that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. Now, you named them your, your shorts. Interesting. You get something called the Velocity Shorts, mm -hmm. the Infinity Shorts. What are the differences? So the men's Velocity Short is uh, the perfect men's short. It's not short. It's not long. It's not a split. It's it's made to be just a perfect all-around short. So it's good for a gymnasium Yeah, kind of I mean, workout. you can wear it anywhere. Again, like, we're really focusing on the runner in mind, but... Me and most runners I know actually do other workouts than running, so it's you know you should be able to wear it to yoga or the gym or cycling class. So, so that's, that's the idea. The velocity it's the velocity short. short. And uh, what's the infinity short? The infinity short is actually a funny story. So men have been asking for splits because of course a lot of men want the shorter splits, which is in development right now. Tell us what a um, split is. As the split is the shorter short, you know, two to three inches with a split. It's uh, it's okay. usually. Again, there's, uh, there's, uh, everybody has their preferences. So there's a little more room to uh, Yeah, room, to a lot of their, short, their, dist their, short their, distance runners their tend their to like them. Thighs. <laughs> yeah, certain guys like them better than others. Yeah. There was a customer that actually bought our men's shorts, ended up writing in saying he wanted shorter shorts, and then he asked, could he buy the women's short? And I was like, actually, why? I don't see why not. Like, it's, it's designed, you know, in a way, it doesn't really make a difference. He, he a thin runner. He wanted to show off his legs. Well, a lot of, I mean, a lot of guys do. even more than that. <laughs> so he ended up buying the women's short. And actually, I wrote him, and I was like, well, it's a woman's short. And he, he wrote back saying, why don't we break down the gender norms and call it, a, you know, like a gender-neutral running short. And I'm like, you have a point. Like, these days, why is there this men's and women. When I grew up, I used to have to wear, like, boys' soccer clothes because they yeah. actually didn't make girls' soccer clothes. That's right. So we just wore them and then rolled the shorts. That's right. And That's right. Women clothing. Even two years ago, I was doing that with other other brand shorts. Like. Right, right. <laughs> I had Catherine Switzer sitting yeah. here when, uh, when she was running Boston in the early days. There were no clothing for women. Yeah. Not even shoes. They had to wear men's. So yours is a, a relatively problem, new field. So you're yeah. really a pioneer. Well, and it's oh, about the, how do you get the fit right. Like, the, the women's short is made to fit a woman without having to roll them, without being too short. Like, there's certain brands, like, I, you know, Lululemon's a great company, but certain people, like like me and a lot of my friends, I don't feel comfortable wearing it. It's, their shorts are, like, too skimpy and short. And then there's certain other brands that make great products where it's like, ah, it's made for kind of like a soccer mom, let's say, like a non-city girl. Mm -hmm. But here we are, we're like Brooklynites, we're, you know, we want to be able to go out and like look cute in our running clothes. So it's trying to find that balance between function and style and, okay. and get it like without having to roll your shorts to make them fit. I, and they should just be comfortable I, as they I are. I get it. I get yeah, it. So yeah. is this, this a full-time position now? This is um, Yeah, do? yeah. I, you know, I occasionally do some random consulting. Like I actually just did some work for a virtual reality company recently. I have my hands in some other things. I did... Um, I put on a like a health and wellness event back in January with um, meditation and yoga and, and music. I'm involved in some other communities that, that talk about mindfulness and meditation mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. spirituality. Uh, yeah, you know, I don't. I, I like to keep busy, so okay. I do some other projects. But yeah, right now my heart is full in okay. this. <laughs> is, is this a one woman company? There's a couple of us. There's some men, not full-time employees, but right now, I mean, it's basically created by runners, and, you know, it's just, I see it as almost like a community project. All of our photographers have been real runners. Our models are real runners. You know, the, the people that do work with the company run, do triathlons. Even the guy that sold our elastic the elastic that goes in the running shorts was sold to me about by a guy who's running the marathon. I mean, it's literally... 
almost everyone involved is a runner. A runner, and it's all yeah. New York City based, I think. Yeah, everything's um, everything's manufactured in New York. Most of the materials are made in the USA. A lot of the fabrics are not because a lot of fabrics just generally aren't made in the U.S. But mm -hmm. yeah, everything's produced just right down the street from here. In, in Manhattan? Yeah, in Manhattan. Oh, cool. Yeah. I know you're... By you're, family factory. Your family factory's made up, but created in uh, Brooklyn, they said. Yeah, created in Brooklyn, you know, with a, a little bit of the Brooklyn edge. Oh, the, right. That's the idea. Oh, <laughs> all right. So just to wrap things up, what are some of your future challenges? First, athletically, you have, do you have a... Uh, a destination race? Right now, I actually put races on hold. Um, I got injured last, well, this year, and um, which has actually been a really great learning experience. I'm running a lot, but I'm trying to not tie myself up to like one particular race right now. You know, I'll probably do a fall marathon or like a, there's an ultra in December I like, you know, like a trail race. So, I, you know, I do race. I'm not super competitive. Again, I do this mostly for fun. It's And, you know, it's like it feels okay. good. And But, okay. I'm, yeah, I mean, I, I love destination races. I haven't chosen one yet, okay. though, but we'll see. Early on, I remember everybody wanted to be on eBay, but now that's passe. <laughs> Nobody wants to be on eBay anymore. <laughs> but at the beginning, if you open up your own shop, you had to have an eBay store. I think in the news today, Macy's is closing dozens and mm. dozens of the stores, department stores, because people are buying on Amazon and online. Mm -hmm. So you're right in the cusp. Yeah, people right don't there. really shop in stores anymore. They don't want to shop in stores. Yeah, but I mean. Do you see yourself, for example, opening up an Amazon store? Because that seems to be the latest thing. I mean, possibly, yeah. I mean, we're selling online. Um, you know, we offer the same benefits that Amazon does, you know, pretty much. I mean... Amazon the only the difference name. is instead of one day shipping, maybe it takes us two. I mean, I don't know. Okay, something. I, not looking. many companies can compete with Amazon, but um, again, it's kind of that you know starting to question like, what is it you're buying? Are you buying it on Amazon just because you want the cheapest crap out there, or? Are you buying something and willing to wait two days to get it and, you know, investing into a quality it's a product? balance. You know, yeah. you can stick to your principles and go broke or you can compromise. Compromise, and say, well, yeah. You know, where are people headed, you know? Mm. Your website is extremely interesting. Besides the clothing you sell, you have guest bloggers. Mm -hmm. You have recommendations of people that want hydration belts. Mm -hmm. You know, they want running shoes. Mm -hmm. You give very solid recommendations. Yeah. It's a very solid website. Oh, so thank you. I commend you for that. Thank you. Well, listen, on that note, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. Thanks for having me.